Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going through Chamath Palihapitiya's original thesis on SoFi. Uh, or at least what he said on CNBC the day he took it public. Now, SoFi went public through a SPAC merger in 2021 when SPACs were still hot. Chamath gets a lot of flack, and I want to just say one thing before everyone in the comments gives him all the flack that they think he deserves. Number one, 2021 was an accelerated moment for stocks uh, that has not been seen for a long time because the Fed pumped about a, a bunch of liquidity in the markets. There was a lot of stimulus checks, and interest rates were very, very, very low, or at least lower than they are today. And so just like anybody who was buying stocks or in the business of taking companies public, like you were going to try to make money when everything seemed like the sky's the limit to be able to make money. Uh, a lot of people say Chamath pumps and dumps and you can have whatever opinions you want on him. Overall, the valuations at that, the, at 2021 for SPACs was higher than it is right now. And that's because of the conditioning of the times. I, I think it's, it's hard to get super, super angry at people that, you know, go public at a big valuation. If you felt it was a big valuation, then you don't buy at the time. Then you wait for it to come down. But if you choose to buy, you think the valuation is reasonable and then you make the purchase. So at the end of the day, 2021 is over. What's happened has happened. If you're down in the stock market, I bought some stocks at outrageously higher prices than they are right now. And you kind of just have to deal with it. And that's why you DCA and go for the long term, because in one or two years, it might suck. But over the course of five, seven, eight, ten 10 years, you should hopefully make a return if you pick solid companies. So I think SoFi is a very solid company, regardless of what has happened with the Chmoth, um, uh debacle of, of SPAC going public. And I also don't think it was a pump and dump. They sold off 15% of their shares uh, at, at a decent price, and they have 85% of their position. They did not entirely liquidate the position. They have 85% of the position, got rid of 15% to fund a bunch of other products that he's working on. It makes a lot of sense. They kind of sold at the top because they recognized it was a top. It's a smart business move and they still have 85% of the position. So at the end of the day, if, if, if you get angry that someone persuaded you to buy a stock, it's more so you felt the valuation was good at the time you bought that stock and you've got to live with the consequences. All of us have to do that. The question is, what is the long-term trajectory of that company? And do you feel like there's a thesis to still invest in it? Overall, I think SoFi is incredibly exciting and it's going to be interesting to see what Chamath originally said when SoFi went public. So let's take a look at this. Chamath Palihapitiya announcing here on Halftime his latest special acquisition company will merge with the popular fintech firm SoFi. You know that well. And take that company public. There's Chamath. He joins us now. Congrats. Welcome. Hey, Scott. How are you? I'm good. Happy thanks. New Year. I know you as well. And I know it's a big day uh, for you. Why SoFi? Um, have you been targeting fintech for a while? How did this come together? Yeah, you know, a lot of the things that I do is try to look at back at some of the best investments we've made, like Amazon and Tesla, and try to find patterns. And in this, what I was trying to do was map those patterns into financial services, just because we're at a point in time where it's clear that the banking infrastructure really isn't meeting the needs of U.S. consumers. And so what I did was just kind of systematically try to figure out what was broken in banking, and then try to figure out which company was best representative of the solution that people wanted, which I can basically tell you is three things. People want low to no fees, they want fair and transparent lending, and they want a full suite of products so that you can basically have a one-stop shop. Low to no fees, transparent lending, and a, a, a one-stop shop that gives you a suite of financial products in one place. Makes a lot of sense. That was kind of the initial thesis from the consumer's perspective, because SoFi is a consumer-basing product. And uh, those are the three things that if you've invested in SoFi, you believe they have the ability to deliver on when it comes to consumers. And SoFi basically was the top of the list when I, when I looked across all the companies on those dimensions. We've obviously been following SoFi for a long time. It's been a member of CNBC's Disruptor 50 list. So we're very familiar with it. We're familiar, obviously, with, with Anthony Noto. The idea of this disruptive force, Chamath, in banking post-financial crisis and what people are looking for, that's a big part of the success of SoFi uh, and certainly of, of your attraction to it. Yeah, in fact, you know, the, the way that I think about this is I call this sort of the anatomy of innovation, right? You look under the hood of the best companies and the best CEOs, they do the following things. The first thing is, when you get a good product, you don't sit on your heels. You double down and you invest really aggressively to use technology to drive down the cost. And then what you do is you deliver those savings onto consumers. Then you launch many more products on top of the same platform. And the most important thing you have to do for people is to democratize access to a key resource. 
That's what Amazon has done. That's what SoFi is doing. Because the problem that banks have right now is after the great financial crisis, what they've done is they make money with hidden fees, with exorbitant fees. They have very restrictive lending practices. Ask anybody who's a middle-income person or a minority or a woman. It's incredibly hard to get access to the money you need to fulfill your dreams. And SoFi has fixed all these things, which is why I think it's such an incredible business. I mean, so, so from the problems perspective, I think he's absolutely correct on that. Banks, after the great financial crisis, decided that the way they're going to make money is off fees. I mean, I remember I paid $18 to Bank of America on something so stupid, and I called them and I tried to get it off, and they were just like, they're fighting with me for these 18 bucks. And, 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 and the reason they were fighting with me is because they need those 18 bucks. Like they need that fee or 35 for overdraft, whatever it is, because that's how they make their money. And SoFi doesn't make money that way. They don't have these types of hidden fees. There's a lot more transparency when it comes to lending and you need money, right? When it comes to lending, either you fundraise it from an investor or you get it from the bank. And, um, you know, when you have the ability to actually get that from one place that's offering a digitally native way to enter into social finance, right? The way we consume, uh, the way we consume financial transactions and engage in financial attractions as almost as a community from a social perspective, that's incredibly interesting. And I think that's what attracted Chamath as well. SoFi made it clear that it was entertaining the idea of going public through a SPAC. Uh, how did you convince Anthony Noto that you were the right sponsor to be the one to make it all come to fruition? So, you know, the, the thing that Anthony has done, which is incredible, is he's basically created, again, as I said, this one-stop shop that gets, you know, your money right, right? A whole suite of products. And the thing is, a lot of what I've done in the past and what my team has done is really help people operationally improve how they grow, how they market, how they can virally expand. And all of these dynamics, I think, came to play because when you look under the hood at SoFi, there's this incredible thing happening. You have these millions of customers, 1.8 million last year, 3 million members this year, but then they are paying for millions and millions of products. And so what we saw were these dynamics where there was this incredible upselling and cross-selling behavior. And what I talked to Anthony about was, you know, can I help? Can I try to do what I've you know, been able to do at Facebook, what I was able to do at Slack? You know, in fact, when Anthony and I first met 10 years ago, it was actually when he was at Twitter and we talked about working together there to do the same things. And so that's how the relationship started and that's how we decided to come together and, and do this transaction. I've always sort of wondered when you, know, when you have a SPAC, it's the, the quest is, is about the what, right? I mean, you, you have a, you know, basically a year to go find the what. What company are you gonna try and merge with and take public? What's not discussed so often is the who. The man or woman behind yeah. the company, uh, who is the operator? What is it about Anthony that is attractive? And can you just speak in general to that idea of the importance of the person who's actually running these companies? Because, you know, not all SPACs are created equal. They're not a guaranteed success. You have to rely on the, the person who's founded this company. You're the investor. This is an important question because Anthony Noto, I believe, is a rock star and not all SPACs are equal. Uh, not all companies are equal. So SPAC has a dirty connotation with it now, but Anthony Noto is the guy you're betting on. Uh, and I think it's important to understand what Chamath thinks of him. Look, I think you're seeing, um, even through the events of the last 24 hours, leadership and character really matter because you are faced with incredibly difficult decisions of policy, of morality, um, all kinds of things. Here's what I can tell you just personally about Anthony. Um, he has lived an incredibly hard life to get to where he has. And I have tremendous empathy for that because I've lived a similar path. And so I just have deep respect for the man that he is and the character that he has. But then, you know, practically speaking in his career, he is just completely money in the bank. I mean, the former CFO of the NFL, the former CFO of Twitter, the former COO of Twitter, an incredible banker, a great research analyst, and just a wonderful human being. So this is sort of a what you see is what you get kind of guy who really believes in, you know, advancing financial services for, you know, middle America, um, for normal folks to be able to sort of get ahead. And I just think that that's a person you want to see win. And then as a result, the company that he's built is just really special. Yeah. So overall, uh, I, you know, it's interesting to just look back on that, uh, probably a year. That was back in January, 2021. Uh, I have some more content coming out about Anthony Noto and understanding a little bit more about his life, but 
CFO of the NFL, COO of Twitter, now building SoFi, the acquisitions he's been able to do, the sort of three-prong attempt that SoFi has been able to offer to consumers. It makes sense why Chamath, a very seasoned business veteran, I mean, took Facebook from, I don't know, zero to 100 million users or something, like, like just crazy growth at Facebook, then started social capital, crazy growth at Slack. I mean, people call him pumping up whatever you want to do. The guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to business. And I think Anthony Noto trusting in him and him trusting in Anthony Noto and allowing that thing to actually happen. I know the stock is sit down significantly since then, but you got to wonder how those two came together and why those two ultimately did what they had to do. And I'm, I mean, I, I'm going back through the, the, these old pieces of content to understand what the initial thesis was around SoFi from Chamats. I'm actually going to be doing another uh, video looking at his his IPO like one pager around SoFi and going deeper into that and why he picked uh, SoFi from from that perspective. But I think it's just nice to look at you know they went public. Why did they go public? How did they go public? And why did Chamath even want to take them public? And it was nice kind of understanding at least from a personal and professional perspective how he thinks of SoFi. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know everyone's gonna crap on Chamath, but at the end of the day, it it is what it is. It got done. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening and watching. Let me know what you think about SoFi and Chamath taking them public. I'll see you in the next one.